Oh, thank you for the way you've worshipped today. Um, I want to ask you to turn in your New Testament to the book of Acts, please. Acts chapter 1. Um, and if you have a Bible or if you're sitting next to someone that has a Bible, please, please come with me to Acts, okay? Um, I, I really want us to see some things together uh, from, that, from that text. And so I invite you to Acts, uh, the first chapter this morning. Uh, I, want, I want you to begin with me just with, with what's said in verse 1. Uh, where, where uh, Luke writes for us, This first account I composed, Theophilus, about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up after he had by the Holy Spirit given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen. To these he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. And gathering them together, he commanded them not to, le to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised. Now stop there. I want you to see that uh, in the opening of the book of Acts, the, the importance that Jesus places on preparing leadership. Do you see that? I mean, he, he made a sizable investment in preparing the men who are going to be his apostles, who are going to be his messengers, who, who are at this moment in time, they are, they are it as far as leadership in the kingdom, right? I mean, that's it. It's just these 12 men. And, and from these 12 men, he's going to sow the seeds for other leadership. But, but it's all going to start with these 12. And, and so he, 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 he is... Um, he, he pulls them aside and he's, he's with them as, these, as this book opens and he's giving instructions to them and he spends 40 days of, of, some de of time devoted to them, teaching them and talking to them about the kingdom. And, and then when they go back to Jerusalem, the things that they do together there are leadership things. If you look at, uh, if you look at the rest of chapter 1, uh, they, they choose someone who's going to take Judas' place. And so Matthias is chosen to uh, function together with these other 11 men. Uh, in verse uh, 14, it says, These all with one mind were continually devoting themselves to prayer along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. That's leadership, isn't it? I mean, they're devoted to prayer during this time as they await God empowering them uh, to be his messengers. Verse 15, Peter stands up and then he leads them in the choosing of someone who's going to take Apollos, I mean, uh, uh, Judas' place, and Matthias is chosen. I, I, I just want to underline the significance that Jesus put upon leadership among his people. I, I've had some hesitation about whether I should preach so many lessons about leadership for us. Uh, and, but when I come to, when I, when I see the emphasis that Jesus puts upon that, it, it just convicts me about the importance of us putting some emphasis upon that. Our study of Genesis has underlined that for me as, as well. Look at, look at Adam and Seth and, and look at Noah and look at Abraham and look at Lot. All of these stories that we've been reading of these men and you see that the rise and fall of what God is, God is purposing with his people, how, how much leadership is a part of that. I mean, what, what he's doing with the story, the Abraham stories that we're reading right now is preparing Abraham to be a father, to be a father of peoples, to be a father of nations. And so he really needs to, he really needs to cultivate in Abraham a, a heart for God that he's going to pass along to the generations that follow him. And so God is making an investment in Abraham as, as a leader, and he, he does the same thing with Noah. He, he, he's doing the same thing with all of these men. And, and he, he, he wants to do, I believe, the same thing with us. I want to make this morning a, a, a recommendation to us, and I want to emphasize the fact that this is a recommendation because I'm not the decision maker for us as a congregation. Our, our men are going to meet together next Sunday and we're going to talk about things that pertain to our work together as we do each, as we do each month. I, I want to recommend to us and I want to recommend for our men to consider that, that, that 
we set as our purpose, as we set as a goal, that a year from now, we're going we're gonna to look to appoint elders or shepherds among us as a people. As I said, I'm not the decision maker. I, I just, but I want to recommend that, as, I want to suggest that to us as some kind of goal or some kind of target for us to work toward. I believe that we have men with potential that within a year's time could be ready to take on that work and that we as a people could be ready, could be ready to submit uh, to, to shepherds or to elders among us. Um, and so what I, what I want to suggest today are some steps that I see as being between us and our readiness for that. And so I want to offer this morning some, some things that I think need to happen if we were to be ready in a, year, in a year's time. Only God, as Jesus says to the disciples here in Acts chapter 1, only he knows the epics, only he knows the future, only he knows what things will transpire. And so I, I don't mean to be presumptuous at all in making that kind of recommendation, but, but sometimes when you have a target or when you have a goal, it at least gives you something to miss, right? Um, and, and so I, I want us to have something to shoot at and some, something that we're working toward. And so having something concrete can help us in that regard so that we can set our sights both individually and congregationally on what God has in store next for us as, as a people. So let me suggest some, three things really this morning that I think need to happen if we're going to have for ourselves some kind of road map to, um, uh, to, to God raising up elders or shepherds among us. Here, here's the first thing I want to say to you. We need to pray for shepherds. We need to pray for shepherds. And I want you to see how much prayer was a part of l leadership and the pursuit of leadership among God's people in Acts. You, you've surely seen this before. Look, if you would, again at verse 24. Look at verse 24 of the text. And it says, uh, when they were appointing someone to take Judas's place, it says in verse 24, And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, who knowest the hearts of all men, show which one of these two thou hast chosen to occupy this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. Only God knows our hearts, right? Only God knows the hearts of our men. God knows what's happening in the hearts of our men, what's happening within our homes. We need to ask for him, for his help and for his hand uh, in, in, in the appointment of men who will shepherd and who will lead us. Our own judgments about that are going to be fallible. I know that God has given us qualifications to guide us so that the Holy Spirit is the one who chooses leaders among us because the Holy Spirit tells us the Holy Spirit tells us who it is that's qualified for that, for that work. But we need to ask for God's hand and God's help in that. Here are inspired men, right? Here are inspired men. They know what God's credentials are. They know what his designs are. They have the benefit of that kind of insight. And yet they're asking for God to show them. We need to ask for God to show us. We need to ask, invite God's hand in that. Look at chapter 3 and verse 1. Chapter 3 and verse 1. And uh, here are two leaders as the book of, as the chapter 3 of Acts opens, it says, And Peter and John were going up to the temple at the ninth hour, the hour of prayer. I, I just want you to appreciate the fact of what a big deal prayer was for these men. Here are Peter and John, and, you know, they could be praying by themselves at home. I, I expect that they did that. But, but here are Peter and John, and they're going up to the temple together to pray. They, they, I mean, there's, there's, there's something important about they're, they're pursuing God's help and God's hand in, in even their exercise of leadership as apostles. Look, if you would, at chapter 6. Chapter 6. And what is said for us in verse... Uh, in verse 4, uh, this is a text we looked at a couple, a couple weeks ago when, uh, when, when the, the seven were appointed to help with the, uh, with the care of the widows. It says the apostles wanted these seven men to be appointed as, a, as additional leadership 
It says, because we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Prayer was for these men who are full-time apostles. Prayer was something that they needed time to invest in. I just want you to see that the two things that they describe as their work is the work of prayer and the work of ministry, ministering the word. I mean, prayer was enough for them to, to describe it as part of their job description. Do you see that? They're, they're, they're working at prayer. And I, I just want us to, to see the significance of that and, 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 in terms, and the significance of that in terms of who's qualified to lead. I mean, we need men to shepherd us who have a heart for prayer the way that these men had a heart for prayer, who are begging for God's hand and his intervention among us and who are working at prayer. Men, fathers, husbands, and, and, and whether you are a father or a husband, men, period. You need to, we need to work at prayer. We need to be working at that. And, and we, need to be, we need to be asking God and inviting God to, to raise up men who can be shepherds among us as a people. I appreciated so much what Scott said about that in his petition this morning. And I appreciate all our men who are making that a part of our public prayers. Jennifer and I have committed every night to praying for God to, to, for God to bless us with leadership here. And, and I would invite you in your home to make that a topic of, of your petitions and of your prayer so that God knows how serious we are about it. <clears throat> Uh, go, go with me to Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. And I just want to underline the importance uh, one, one more time here where it says that there were at Antioch in the church that was there, prophets and teachers, Barnabas and Simeon, who was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene and Menaean, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul, and while they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I've called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them and they sent them away. Every time in the book of Acts you read about leadership, you read about them praying about leadership. And so here they are ministering to the Lord and fasting. Uh, Barnabas and Saul and these other teachers together with them and I expect that the reason why they're ministering to the Lord and fasting, because of the way that God responds to that, is, there, is that they're looking, they're looking to be more useful to God, right? They're looking for more opportunities to share his word. They're looking to be busier in the kingdom. They're asking God, what's next? And they are hungry for what's next. That, that's why they're fasting. They have an appetite for God to show them what's next. And so God says, here's what's next. I want you to take your two best workers, Barnabas and Saul, and I want you all to send them away because you've got enough leadership there to, to, to continue the work. And so I want, I want Antioch to continue growing and I want you guys to keep, but, I, but, but I, I want you to take these two men, I want you to send them away. And so they, they send them away with prayer and with fasting again. If we were to go on and read in chapter 14, we, we, we'd see as well where Barnabas and Saul appoint elders in all the churches that they go to on their first journey, and they do it again with prayer. They consecrate them with prayer. Uh, my little sister, uh, my youngest sister, Nicole, uh, is expecting, we just found out. She's got a little, she and, and uh, my brother-in-law Todd have a little girl named Cora, and so now she's just a few months pregnant with their, with their second child. And um, mom was telling me yesterday that when they shared with Cora the fact that they were expecting, uh, Cora said, oh, I'm so glad. I've been praying for God to give us, for, for God to give me a little brother or sister, and I was afraid he wasn't listening to me. In fact, she was so um, persistent about this. She said, she said to her mom, she said, I was thinking about hiding all the baby furniture so that God would know that I was serious about this. Well, I, I just want you to appreciate a, 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 little, a, a little child, a three-year-old, being serious about something and wanting to show God that she was serious. 
Now, why are they fasting and praying when they're appointing leadership? Why do you go on a hunger strike? I mean, why do you go without food? It's to, it's to show that you're serious about your petition, right? And what, what, one of the things we need to do is we need to show God that we are serious about having leaders, that we really want this, we, 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 that, we, that, we are, that we are begging him, that we're ready for it, that we want him to remove whatever the barriers are between us and having that. And so I want to invite us as a people over the next year to show God that we, that we are serious about this, that we really want this, and that we really crave his leadership in that, that he, we want him to show us the way, and we want him to show us the men, and we want him to shape us however we need to be shaped, both as men and as a congregation, so that we will be ready for it, right? So we need to pray for shepherds. Secondly, I want to suggest to us that we need to do what the men are doing here in Acts chapter 13. And I want to, uh, I want us to speak to, to our men in particular about this. <clears throat> we need to not only pray for shepherds, we need to prove ourselves. We need to prove ourselves. Um, and this is what I mean by that. We need men to qualify themselves to be shepherds over the next year by, by doing the work of shepherds. Now, I don't mean exercising the authority that shepherds do as overseers, but I mean doing the things that shepherds do in terms of tending, in terms of building relationships, in terms of, of exercising what, what influence God has given you uh, among his people in a way that grows people, that helps us, that ministers to us uh, we need we need our men to prove themselves in that regard I, I want you to see what's happening here in Acts chapter 13 again read with me verses 1 and following what says there was there were at Antioch in the church that was there prophets and teachers and then it names them Barnabas Simeon Lucius Manan and and, and 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 then and then Saul at the end of verse 1 and they were ministering to the Lord and fasting. And so the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I've called them. Now I want you to see that the Spirit has not called them to work that they are inexperienced with. The Spirit has not called them to, to do work that they haven't already been doing. The reason why the Spirit says, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for these missionary journeys is because Paul and Barnabas have already shown themselves to be men who have a heart for souls. They have qualified themselves in growing the church there at Antioch. They've qualified themselves to be the Holy Spirit's men for this work. And we need our men to prove themselves in the same way that, 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 that you have a heart for sheep, that you have a heart for growing people, that you have a heart for ministering the word, that you have a heart for tending the flock of God. We need our men to prove themselves in that same regard. Um, 1 Peter 3 talks about how a shepherd, that a man needs to aspire to the work of an overseer. And I just want to underline there that, it's, that, that the aspiration is not just as, aspiring to the office. It's aspiring to the work. And the way that we need to show our aspiration for the work of shepherding, uh, the, 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 of, of tending God's people, is to do the work. And not to aspire to the office, but to, but to do the work and show God and show others our aspirations for that. How else, how else are, are the sheep, how else is the flock of God going to be... Um, going to be confident to entrust their souls and their well-being to shepherds unless they know that these are men that, unless they've seen in them, that these are men that care for us as sheep. These are men who want to, and so if you aspire to be a shepherd, you need to win the confidence of us as a people. You need to win the confidence of us as a, as a flock. I'm, I'm afraid by saying things like that, <clears throat> That, that I, I intimidate our men about being shepherds. And I don't, I, I don't want to say so much about the importance of the work of elders that I, 
that I discourage our men from aspiring to that. I, quite the opposite. I, I want to encourage us to, to, to aspire. But I also want us to be sober about those aspirations and to, and to, to call on all of us men to, to, to step up what we're doing in our, in our, in our service to God. Jen and I, we, we, we came to Chelsea. I mean, this is, this is why we settled here. It is because we saw in the group here um, great spiritual leadership. Um, even in the absence of an eldership, we admired, I admired, the way that Families that were, that were our age and younger, our age and older, how, how they were investing in doing the kingdom work together. And that, that's part of what drew us. Um, and, and so I, I, um, I have been so encouraged by the kind of leadership that we have among our men, the kind of leadership that we have among our, our women. And I, I, I want us to... I want us to be encouraged and I want us to be um, convicted uh, about, about continuing to grow that and about becoming more in that, uh, in our service to God. I believe that we have multiple seniors who are, who are potential elders among us as a group, men who are retired, who have both the knowledge and who have the life experience, um, and who have the wisdom and the confidence of the people to lead and, and competence to lead us as shepherds. In addition to that, I believe that we have multiple men who are uh, finishing the raising of their family, who have raised their children to an accountable age, who are still working but who are in their latter 40s and in the beginning of their 50s. If they're not, in their, if they're not 50, then they're knocking on the door. Um, I'm 47 now. You know, that, that's not middle age. I mean, how, do, how many 94-year-old men do you know? And so I'm, I'm, past, I'm past the middle. And, and we've got a number of men that are past the middle who, who have shown themselves by the way that they're raising their family, by the way that they're managing their house, by, by, the, by, their, by their growth and their knowledge of the word, by what they do in the community, what they do in their family, and what they do among us, that, that they are men with, 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 with shepherd hearts. Now, I believe when I look among us, I see six or seven men that I think within the course of a year w would be ready to shepherd us that would be a, a mix of both some senior men and, and some men that, that are some younger elders among us if I can use that terminology and it not be misunderstood, um, I see a mix of men who would be qualified to lead us in that way. Now, that's not my decision. And it's not enough for me to believe in them, and it's not enough for me to see them. If, if we as a group don't see them, if we as a group don't have confidence in them, if, if, if it's not easy for us to note those men who are... Um, and if, you're not, if we're not, as a group, connected to them, then, then we're not ready for that. And they're not ready to be our shepherds. And, and so th that's why we, we need our men to prove themselves so that it's obvious to all of us who it is that's prepared to be our shepherds, who it is that's prepared to lead us. And, and so we, we need our men to prove themselves in that regard so that when, when, it, when it is time... Uh, the selection of such men will be easy and obvious to us. Let me give you four specifics, four specific ways in which we can prove ourselves. Number one, <clears throat> we need our senior men to take more ownership of the work. I, I just want to—I want to call on our men who have gray hair, our men who have grandchildren, our men who have raised their families, our men who are retired from their work. I, I want to call on our senior men. To, to, to really take more ownership of our work together as a people. We, we need to see you more. We need you in the men's meetings. We do. We, we need to hear 
We, we need to hear your, your recommendations about things. We need our senior men to take some of us young whippersnappers under your wing and, and help us out. Uh, we, we need to hear what you have to say to us uh, about, tell, tell me how I can be a better preacher. I mean, help me with that. Uh, t- tell our men who have, have, who have eldership potential where they need to groom themselves. T- take, take them aside and don't, don't tear them down, but take them aside and give them some constructive criticism that can, that can help them grow. Our younger, I know our men would invite that from you. So help us in that way. I, I just want to beg to our men who are seniors, we need your leadership among us. We, we, and I know... Could I get an amen from our younger men? Is that not so? Amen. Amen. I'm going to lose my voice, aren't I? (laughs) No, 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 I'm kidding. Then I'll start coughing or something. (laughs) Yeah. Secondly, we need our younger men to invite feedback and ask for help in your leadership blind spots. Um. It, it is so important. It is so important for our younger men to, um, to to know to know where their leadership gaps are, and so to ask for feedback, to ask for insight in identifying those areas that that they might be blind to. Um, and you're a lot more likely to receive that if you invite that. And, and, and you, will get, you will earn so much more respect from others if you ask for that. And, and so I want to I, I encourage all of our men to welcome that, to invite feedback in those areas where, you, where, where, where others might see that you need to grow. Ask, ask somebody. Sit down with someone that you respect and ask for that kind of feedback. Ask for that kind of insight. Um, I, I want you to see that the, 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 the men here that are described in Acts 13, I mean, they're spending time together. And they are honing, they're sharpening one another. Barnabas and Saul, at the end of this journey, they're going to have a spat with each other because they were both so, they were, they were so invested in the work that they, 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 they wanted to get it right. And even though they had disagreements with each other, they had disagreements because they, they wanted to do it right. And, and I respect that about the both of them. Both of them had hearts for what was right. And, and so we need, our, we need our younger men to invite that kind of feedback um, so that we can, we can grow in those areas where we need to grow. We are not going to have a perfect eldership. And there's not going to be one man that's going to be the perfect elder. And that's the reason why God has a, a multiplicity of leaders and of counselors is so that we offset one another's weaknesses and we leverage one another's strengths. But, but the only way that those can really be leveraged is if there is a, an environment among our leadership where we can talk to one another about, you know, that was boneheaded. That was not smart. You, you, you need to not, you're, you're not the one to do that. Uh, or, or, you, or you need some help when you do that. Don't go do that by yourself. And so there needs to be an environment among our leadership where we can talk to each other, lean on one another's strengths, leverage that, but at the same time also mitigate one another's weaknesses. And and so the the humbler our men are about talking about those things, talking about where we need to grow, talking about where we are strong, and talking about where we need to develop, those are important conversations. Um, And it's important that our young men invite that. Number three, <clears throat> we need to show God and we need to show one another our appetite to be used up in his service. I just want to underline in Acts 13 again how these men were fasting. They were hungry for God to, 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 to use them, to take them where they needed to go next. Uh, and, and we need, over the next year, we need to show God that kind of appetite. As a congregation, we need to show him that kind of appetite for growth. And, and number four, a very specific area and in, in, in a very specific uh, um, 
priority for us in the, in the area of, of, of us proving ourselves, we really need to work together as a people on a house-to-house -house culture. We, we really need to work on hospitality. And I don't, I don't want to say that to the point that you, that you think that oh, I'm just talking about us just, you know, j just having milk and cookies all the time or about us just, just us eating together. I, 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 we need to be connected. We, and, and we've got to be together more than just here in these four walls. If, if, there, if you're going to be as a shepherd in, in a position where someone is going to talk to you about the things that are, mo that are the most intimate kinds of things for, 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 and, and needs that they have spiritually, if they're going to call on you to help with their kids, if they're going to call on you for advice and for counsel, and if you're going to be if you're going to desire to bring those things to, to men that are our shepherds, that there has to be a close relationship where you invite that kind of intimacy, and where you ask for that kind of counsel, and, and that only comes because we are connected together. And everything about our culture fractures us. Everything about our culture means that when we, you get off of work and you come home and you go into the bat cave, I mean, you pull the car into the garage and you pull down all the shades and you don't want anyone to come to the door. You don't want, any, you don't want the phone to ring. You, you just want to be in the cave. And that is, that is not good. That is not good for the, the, the connections that need to exist in the body. We've got to fight how culture does that to us, how it fills up our time with, with all kinds of other pursuits so that there's not time for building the kind of meaningful spiritual ties that need to exist if we're to be healthy as a people. And so we've really got to work on that over the next year. If we don't, this is what will happen. We will appoint elders, but they will be disconnected. We will appoint elders, but... But and, and, and some of our core people will know them well, but our people that are, that are on the fringe, our people who are not well-connected, won't, 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 won't come to them. And, and we'll have folks that drift, and, 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 and no one will pay attention. They'll just be gone. And, and that's not what we want, is it? I mean, we don't want a disconnected eldership. We don't want a shepherd, a shepherds that aren't connected to the flock. We, we want to be connected, so we all have to own that. We all have to work at that. <clears throat> Will you permit me one more? One more. <clears throat> I hate distractions, um, and I hate, the, uh, I hate this distraction. But we not only need to pray for shepherds, and we not only need to prove ourselves, the third thing is that we need to prepare one another. We need to prepare one another. Um, one of the things that I'm, I'm fearful has happened in terms of church culture is that we um, that Christianity has become kind of a do-it-yourself enterprise? And this is what I mean by that. Uh, you, you come, you, we all come together here, and we uh, we we worship together, and we hear a message, uh, we contemplate a message in Bible class, and then we go home and you do it yourself. Um, I mean, that's it. You know, we we. What you get here is just the information you need so you can go home and you can do it yourself. Um, now, my, my judgment about the New Testament culture is that, the, is that the people of God were much more connected than that. And that they were, that they were, that they were working not just at doing it themselves, but, but doing it together. And so they're evangelizing together and they're growing each other and they're equipping each other. And, and what we read here in Acts 13 is not of... This, these are not personal workers that are gathered together and they're, they're talking about evangelism and Paul is going to go do it and Barnabas is going to go do it and Manan is going to go do it and Lucius is going to go do it. They are doing this together. They are working together at how they can be more effective in reaching out to souls. Barnabas and Saul are partners together in the work there at, at, at Antioch and they will be in their missionary journey. One of the things I'd like to suggest, and this is for our men to decide, but one of the things that I'd like to suggest is that our men spend some concerted time together over the next year growing ourselves as leaders. 
there are some things that I think that I have to say that I would like to say to our men that I believe can help our men be better leaders. And I know that our men have some things that they can say to me that can help me be a better leader. But I don't just want to talk about those things. I want to practice those things. And so I'd like to suggest, I'd like to recommend that we devote some time and some resources over the course of the next year to really growing our men in the area of, 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 of leadership. Whether that means we take some Sunday afternoons or that, we, or that we find some time during the week, but that we do something. And I don't, I don't want to just, I don't want to waste time. I don't want to get together and twiddle our thumbs. I mean, I, I want to do something that has some guts to it, that has some teeth to it, that makes us better men, that makes us better leaders. And so something that has substance to it, that, that, that makes us more and that makes us better. Be, because I, I need your help in that. And we need each other's help in that. So that, we can be, so that we can prepare ourselves. Jesus invested so much time in preparing leaders. And he taught them to be busy about that too. So they always have, they always have someone they're bringing along. Barnabas is bringing Paul along and Paul is bringing Barnabas along and they're bringing John Mark along and Timothy. And we need to be bringing one another along in that pursuit, in that pursuit as well. So three things that I want to suggest we need to do over the next year. We need to pray for shepherds. We need to beg God. We need to prove ourselves. We need to prove ourselves. We need our men to show, them, to show their aspiration for the work. And we need to prepare one another. We need to allocate purposeful time and resources to growing our men. Everybody grows to the leadership. Every family grows to the leadership that exists in the home. Our country, what it's going to be over the next four years in the, the election of a president, I mean, the rise and fall of our country depends on leadership, doesn't it? You believe that? And, and, our, and our, our, our growth and, or decline as a congregation depends on leadership. And what's true of us as a community is true for you individually as well. The leader in your life is, depend, is, is determining where you are right now in your spirituality. You know that? The leader in your life is depending on where you are. Who's the leader in your life right now? Is Jesus calling the shots? Is he directing your steps? If he's not, you need his leadership more than anything. You need him to be the one who is taking you where you need to go, who's charting your courses. And if he's not doing that right now, then won't you make him the sovereign? As together we stand and as we sing.